Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the transduction of painful stimuli. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing the anatomy and physiology of uh, primary nociceptive neurons called nociceptors. So we've discussed that we can divide nociceptive neurons into two categories, the A-fiber nociceptors and the C-fiber nociceptors. And the main difference between these is that the A-fibers are larger in diameter and myelinated, whilst the C-fibers are much smaller in diameter and unmyelinated. In addition, the A-fibers tend to have a uh, much more localized receptive field, whereas the C-fibers have a larger receptive field. We've then gone further, we've divided C-fibers and A-fibers up further, depending on which noxious stimuli the C-fiber or the A-fiber responds to. Okay, and we've uh, classified them as such. And what we now want to turn our attention to is how these nociceptive neurons uh, enter their spinal cord, basically, how they pass their information to the central nervous system, okay, and where their cell bodies are. So basically, let me get another piece of paper and let's have a look at this anatomy. Okay, so, right, so we've got our nociceptive neuron, which had its axon terminal within the skin. I think I actually will draw uh, the epidermal pegs and the dermal papillae. I haven't drawn those on my previous diagram, which is quite bad, but there is these sort of little invaginations of the dermis inwards, and then these evaginations of the epidermis outwards, giving this sort of wavy appearance uh, between the junction between the epidermis and the dermis, but never mind. Okay, so here's the dermis. And then we had our nociceptive neuron here, which had all of its um, branches going off and innovating different portions of the skin. Okay, like so. Okay, and uh, basically this axon of this nociceptor is going to go in peripheral neurons all the way until it gets into a mixed spinal nerve that is about to enter the spinal cord. Okay, so let's now show a cross-section of the spinal cord. So what we're going to do is, if we imagine the spinal cord like so, so here is it viewed front on, basically. What we're going to do is cut through the spinal cord and have a look, and we're cutting through at the level where this neuron is about to enter the spinal cord. So it's coming in at the moment in a mixed spinal nerve here, okay? So this will be coming in on one side, basically. Okay, like so. And, you know, if you want an example, it might be coming in on L1, okay, at the L1 level. So each vertebral level has a um, mixed spinal nerve coming off bilaterally. You have a one coming off on the right and one coming off on the left. Okay, of course, patient's right and patient's left, because we're viewing from the front. Right, okay, so let's put our spinal cord then here. Okay, so the spinal cord is this sort of oval shape here, and then at the front it has this sort of little sulcus known as the ventral sulcus coming in like so. Okay, there we go. And uh, the spinal cord also has a septum coming in from the back known as the dorsal septum. So let's put these initial landmarks labelled up. So this is the dorsal septum of the spinal cord, and this is the ventral sulcus. Okay, which is another name for sort of um, uh, a pit, basically. Okay, uh, so this is the ventral sulcus, and that runs all the way up. So you've got this ventral sulcus going at the anterior portion of the spinal cord all the way up. So ventral is just another word for anterior, and dorsal is just another word for the back, posterior. Okay, right. So, the spinal cord can be divided, as with the entire central nervous system, into two different portions. The white matter of the spinal cord, which mainly consists of myelinated neurons, um, well, myelinated axons, and then the grey matter of the spinal cord, which consists of the cell bodies. Okay, so basically the grey matter is in a distinctive pattern within the spinal cord. So you have this distinctive butterfly-like shape uh, in which the grey matter is within, okay, like so. So this is this grey matter of the spinal cord, like so. So this is the grey matter, if we look for a cross-section. 
OK, now, what's going to happen is the mixed spinal nerve is going to split into two as it joins on to the spinal cord. So you have uh, the dorsal root here, which will go back and enter the spinal cord at the back. And then you also have the ventral root, which will come forward and enter the spinal cord from the front. OK, so this is the ventral root here. OK. And uh, this is the dorsal root, and I've actually missed something crucial out on this. There is a swelling of the dorsal root called the dorsal root ganglion that's going to become important in a moment, and we'll discuss what it is in a moment. So this is the dorsal root. Okay, now in tandem with that, uh, this sort of projection of the grey matter forwards this is known as the ventral horn, okay? So the ventral gray matter horn of the spinal cord. And the projection backwards over here, this is known as the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. And of course, you have a, a dorsal horn on the left and a dorsal horn on the right and a ventral horn on the left and a ventral horn on the right. So this is also a dorsal horn over here, okay? Right, so the grey matter can be divided up into these uh, ventral and dorsal horns. And I'm going to have to call it there for this video because my pen has just run out. But we'll continue this discussion in the next video.